chapter 9 harmony in the society understanding universal human order recap so far we have explored harmony in the human being and harmony in the family in the previous chapter we discussed at length about harmony in the family it has to do with relationship the base of relationship is feelings in one self for the other self feelings are fundamental to harmony in the family except for the feeling of care physical facility has only a symbolic role in expressing the feelings we listed all the values feelings in human human relationship and explored into the meaning of each we saw that trust is the foundation value in relationship and love is the complete value in the sequence the next level of living for a human being is society in this chapter we will share the proposal about the harmony in the society do verify for yourself whether this is something naturally acceptable to you and whether this will lead to mutual fulfillment and the fulfillment of all we are well aware that human families do not exist in isolation but are always in mutual coexistence with other families in a family cluster also the family relationship naturally get extended far and wide in addition we usually need to frequently interact with various other human beings and this forms an immediate society let's now try to understand the harmony in the society of course the base of harmony in the society is harmony in the family for which the base is harmony in the human being that's why we are going in a sequence first we talked about harmony in the human being which leads to harmony in the family which further leads to harmony in the society we are trying to unfold them one by one only people who have harmony within will be able to ensure a family which is in harmony families which have harmony within can give rise to a society which is in harmony we will explore into three aspects of society one the goal of human being living in society human goal two the system required to achieve human goal three scope of this system standing human goal the goals of human being living in a society can be articulated as shown in the figure 91 check if this is also your aspiration what is naturally acceptable to you right understanding in every human being or only a few to have right understanding and others to follow them prosperity in every family or few families to have accumulation and others to be deprived and dependent on the few fearlessness based on trust and affection in the society or a state of fear based on mistrust and jealousy in the society coexistence or mutual fulfillment in nature or exploitation and domination of nature find it out also find out if you can do away with any of these four goals are all four desirable or can we leave something out next find out if all four are achieved then what else would be required 
A little exploration will show that all four goals are desirable and required. We can't leave anything out and nothing seems to be missing. Therefore, we recognize a definite human goal and it can be common to everyone living in the society. Can you see that? The next question is that if all four are required, then from where do we need to start? Will we start with right understanding and right feeling in the self or individual or with prosperity in every family or fearlessness in the society or coexistence in nature and existence. Since the individual human being is a basic building block for the family, which is the basic building block of society, ensuring right understanding and right feeling in every individual is the first thing to do. Families of such individuals only can identify their need for physical facility, produce more than that and ensure prosperity in the family. Prosperous families living together in a relationship of mutual fulfillment can ensure fearlessness based on trust amongst themselves. Such a society can ensure mutual fulfillment with the rest of the nature and it can lead to coexistence or in nature and existence. This is the kind of society we want to now explore into. Appraisal of the current status. In this chapter, we are exploring into society a social order, a way of life that is fulfilling for all, generation after generation. At the core of it, all human effort has been in this direction. If we see today, some of the major achievements include, one, there is abundant availability of physical facility like clothes, food, housing, gadgets, instruments and equipment. Two, the world has become well connected physically by transportation and virtually by television and telecommunication. Three, there is more sense of equality in society through democracy Governance changes hands to people who are more competent by people's vote. Four, infant mortality rates have reduced and lifespans have increased. Five, education is now a basic human right. Literacy has increased. Today, things can be done at a pace much greater than perhaps any time in the past. However, in the absence of a comprehensive goal and program, rather than a holistic development, there are many problems. Terrorism, global warming, and climate change, to name a few. We can see that the root of these problems is in the wrong assumptions we have about ourselves, about the nature, the existence, and therefore, about our purpose, about goal of human, of society, and so on. With these assumptions, the efforts are often leading to contradictions. These appear as the problems. These are only the indicators or symptoms of our wrong assumptions. While we are discussing the current state, it is with a view to realize the need for right understanding and to be able to see a holistic solution in the light of it and further to be able to define our participation in, in it to develop the commitment for it the understanding of the existential harmony is essential for recognizing our basic aspiration and our collective goal as a society and make efforts to live by it. In time, we, as we make sincere effort in the right direction at the individual level, family level, society level, the symptoms which are due to lack of solution at the level of the society will 
slowly dissolve it is with this background we are now we are discussing the current state in figure 92 the comprehensive human goal is mentioned on the top we are working for all four of these goals some of them or none of them the predominant prevailing notion of societal objectives are mentioned in the bottom half of figure 92 are we also having such notions and making effort for them let us try to find out what is the effort in the society today the first goal is to ensure right understanding and right feeling happiness in every human being as we discussed in chapter 4 the prevailing notion of happiness is quite different therefore the major effort is for accumulation of physical facility money by any means and getting feelings from others these false assumptions are being propagated knowingly or unknowingly even through education through the parents schools teachers media friends and the overall society the second goal of prosperity is similarly replaced by accumulating more and more as we are not able to identify our needs for physical facility due to lack of right understanding it is felt that if one has money one is prosperous however without having an idea of our needs we keep on accumulating more and more unlimited and by any means it is said that most of the money supply is in the hands of a very few people with this as the driving assumptions in the society it has led to people living in three kinds of obsessions one obsession for consumption two obsession for profit three obsession for sensual pleasure obsession with some thing implies over evaluation of that thing considering it to be the ultimate aim of life and that thing itself become becoming the value obsession for consumption means to consume more and more for happiness be it food clothes house gadgets uh, and so on obsession for profit means to take as much possible from other and give as little as possible with assumption that more profit means more happiness and prosperity obsession for sensual pleasure means trying to give happiness from the sensations through body for example obesity is largely due to an obsession for taste similarly in the case of any other sensation many of the crimes in the society today are due to the pursuit of these obsessions uh, be it corruption rapes or murders it is seen it is these that are that we are trying to deal with at the level of the society when their roots are in the family and individual assumptions similarly the th- the third goal of fearlessness trust is replaced by domination exploitation and fear in the society when we understand that the other is a human being like us with the same purpose etc we will think about mutual fulfillment in the relationship so there will be trust in the society in the absence of right understanding there is lack of trust and there is domination exploitation and fear instead when we dominate is it naturally acceptable to the other person today what goes in the name of business what goes in the name of economy is all about expansion profit and growth trying to expand our territory now when we try to expand there's there are only two possibilities 
either you expand on the basis of domination or you expand on the basis of relationship that is the only choice we have now if you go by domination we all know you have to really force upon the other person the other person doesn't buy that domination or exploitation and the other person tries all the possibilities to resist to retaliate this ultimately results in opposition and mutual unhappiness on the other hand when you try to expand not with domination but with right feelings in relationship your behavior touches the other other person other people accept you other people accept you they trust you this certainly results in mutual fulfilling existence today instead of trust we have domination and exploitation in the society when this happens ultimately it leads to problems the world is facing today opposition struggle and ultimately terrorism and war then our fourth goal is coexistence in nature and existence but what are we mostly trying to do today is mastery over nature and its exploitation when we exploit the nature it results into resource depletion and environmental pollution and there is a lot of hue and cry about it in the whole world today it is not that we were not using natural resources or creating some pollution a thousand years ago the difference today is that we are using resources at a much faster rate than what nature can produce we are generating so much of waste and pollution and at such a pace that is beyond nature's capacity to absorb that waste that is why we are confronting this problem of resource depletion and pollution as a consequence there is a crisis of of global warming and uh, climate change social administration is grappling with worries about the system consuming a very large percentage of resources on healthcare to combat obesity depression lifestyle disorders and suicide another large chunk for defense law enforcement and legal systems to deal with problems in relationship and the seemingly unsolvable crisis of global warming and climate change to top it all they themselves seems to be facing frustration and depression suffering from multiple um, lifestyle disorders at the level of the relationship they are facing strife in family divorce and isolation even with all the power and money happiness seems to be elusive they like everyone else are searching for a way out we all seem to be in the same sinking boat these are some of the problems we are facing in the society these problems are not coming from some hitch some lacuna or some inherent contradiction in the nature rather they are coming from individuals without right understanding people with wrong assumptions and living on the basis of gross misunderstanding today we are trying to address to these and such other problems in bits and pieces but such efforts result into more control more surveillance more rules and regulations more courts more police and defense more jails and so on what is being proposed is that only a holistic solution that takes care of all aspects and for all people as well as rest of nature will work this book is an attempt to describe a holistic solution which is in tune with the way the nature existence is the way ahead 
there is a need for understanding the existential harmony for recognizing our basic aspiration and our collective goal as a society and make effort to live by it let us go step by step in exploring the proposals about such a human society human goal and systems for its fulfillment that is human order we have already seen that all these four goals are important and that we cannot do away with any one of them we have to realize all four a four of them now if we have to realize all four where do we start what is the sequence in which these four goals can be fulfilled refer to figure 93 the first and foremost is right understanding and right feeling because it ensures happiness in the individual and also prepares the base for other three without right understanding and right feeling it is not possible to identify the need for physical facility therefore right understanding and right feeling has to come before prosperity similarly fearlessness can take place only with the acceptance of relationship with right feeling in relationship and prosperity in every family the fourth goal is a natural outcome of the first three only with right understanding can mutual fulfillment be realized the next question is what would be the program to fulfill this human goal what societal systems would be required the social order that is fulfilling for all human beings as well as the rest of the nature is the subject of our exploration that is what we are calling as human order or universal human order dimensions or systems of human order with this clarity we can discuss five interconnected complementary dimensions of human order dimensions or systems of human order with this clarity we can discuss five interconnected complementary dimensions of human order required for the fulfillment of all human goals these are five basic systems of a human society one education sanskar two health self regulation three production work four justice preservation five exchange storage let us see how these dimensions fulfill the human goals education sanskar leads to right understanding and right feeling which is happiness having a system of human education sanskar ensures right understanding and right feeling which is happiness which is the first goal of course it has to reach every individual health and self regulation leads to health of the body having a system for health and self regulation ensures health of the body it also helps us in identifying what is required as physical facility for nurturing protection and right utilization of the body which forms the basis for prosperity this indirectly ensures coexistence with nature as well production work leads to prosperity production work ensures the production of more than the required physical facility the health self regulation and production work dimensions together lead to fulfillment of the second goal of prosperity in every family also if production is done in the manner which is cyclic and mutually enriching it will contribute to the mutual fulfillment that is coexistence with rest of nature which is the fourth goal justice preservation leads to fearlessness and coexistence respectively then comes justice which has to do with human human relationship if human human relationship is understood accepted fulfilled and rightly evaluated it ensures mutual happiness or justice then there is trust or fearlessness in the society justice ensures the fulfillment of the third goal preservation leads to fulfillment of relationship of human being 
with rest of nature which means it fulfills the fourth goal of coexistence or mutual fulfillment with nature. Exchange storage leads to prosperity and fearlessness. Finally, exchange and storage with a feeling of mutual fulfillment rather than a feeling of exploitation will be an aid in ensuring prosperity in the family and also contribute to fearlessness or trust in the society. This is how the dimensions of human order fulfill the human goals. This has been summarized in figure 9.4. Now we will go in detail of each of the dimensions or systems. We will unfold them one by one in greater detail. Education Sanskar. Education is to develop the right understanding of the harmony at all levels of being from self to the entire existence, individual, family, society, nature, and system. Sanskar is to develop the basic acceptances of the harmony at various levels. These acceptances give rise to commitment to live with them. It also provides the foundation for preparation and practice of living in harmony at all levels. Preparation includes learning the skills and technology for living in harmony. Our living is an expression of our sanskar. Our worldview, attitude, tendencies, etc. are all part of the expression, expressions of our sanskar. As proposed in Chapter 3, the role of education and sanskar is to facilitate the development of the competence to live with definite human conduct by ensuring all the three. One, right understanding. That is, understanding the harmony in the human being, in the family, society, nature, existence. Thus, understanding what to do as a human being at all these levels. Two, Right feeling, the capacity to live in relationship with the other human beings, in family and in the society. Three, right skills for prosperity, that is the capacity to identify the need for physical facility, the skill and practice for sustainable production of more than what is required by the way of labor using cyclic mutually enriching process, the feeling of prosperity. These are the three major outcomes of human education and sanskar. This process can take place when the teacher has a feeling of affection and guidance for the student and the student has a feeling of gratitude and glory for the teacher. A person given human education will ensure right understanding and right feeling in himself, thereby living with continuous happiness. He will be able to identify the need for physical facility and produce more than what is required, therefore ensuring prosperity in the family. With the right feeling, he will be able to ensure living in relationship with other human beings leading to fearlessness in society. And if the production is done by cyclic and uh, mutually enriching process, he will also ensure coexistence in nature. The current education is hardly working on the first one. It is mainly talking about skills, not really paying attention to values. Instead of the right feeling, competition, feeling of opposition is getting promoted. Instead of Skills for prosperity, skill for exploitation are getting promoted. The major focus seems to be on accumulation of money almost by any means. Young children primarily learn by observation and practice. The environment at the home, in the school and the society plays a significant role, much more than the words. Children older than about 10 years or so continue to learn by observation and practice, but they start self-exploring 
validating by their own experience the guidance for self exploration becomes significant see appendix a a91 for details since this book is primarily primarily written for older children and adults the approach of self exploration has been taken we are placing the proposals for our for your self verification now if we recall chapter 3 we had discussed that education has to ensure the transition from animal consciousness to human consciousness see figure 36 you can see that living in animal consciousness means living with physical facility as the only priority people living in this assumption with this assumption give rise to an inhuman society on the other hand education that results into living with human consciousness education which ensures all three things that is right understanding in the self relationship with human beings and physical facility with the rest of nature will thereby result in a society which ensures the fulfillment of all four goals all four human goals as shown on the upper right side of figure 95 the education system has a major responsibility for preparing the people and developing the society into a living model of human society this is an ongoing process once the human society is realized or established it is able to ensure human education and sanskar for the next generation and if human education and sanskar established it is able to prepare people who have the capacity to contribute to develop and live in human society to participate and contribute in the con- in the continuation of human society of course formal education is an important part of the education sanskar dimension but the family and the society plays a significant role in this process of education sanskar by the inputs that the child receives through them on a day to day basis the behavior and the system in the family the messages through newspapers and media and the other festivals functions celebrations significant events like birth marriages death etc all these contribute to the making of an individual's sanskar health and self regulation we had discussed this at length in chapter 7 we may recall a few things from there before discussing the related societal systems self regulation is the feeling of responsibility toward the body for nurturing protection and right utilization of the body health of the body is indicated by the fact that it is able to act according to the instruction of the self and the different parts of the body are in harmony the feeling of self regulation is not a restraining or controlling but rather it is identifying the responsibility and having this feeling of commitment towards the body for one nurturing the body to protection of the body and three right utilization of the body at the level of society we can look at the societal systems required to support protect and enrich family and so- social efforts some of these are outlined below one education system it is necessary to prepare the child in all dimensions of health so that he or she develops the de- feeling of self regulation and has the appropriate practice to keep the body healthy two family system it plays an important role harmony in the family provides a conducive environment a system of appropriate intake routine and labor and exercise etc is a natural part of the family system 
It will also have the skills and means to deal with minor ailments with home remedies. It would participate meaningfully in these areas in the neighborhood, in the family cluster and beyond. 3. Health system at the societal level. A core part of the societal system is mainstream education. This has been highlighted in point 1. Further, the health system would be focused on ensuring health and on prevention of disease rather than on treatment of disease alone. It would promote labor, exercise and various means to keep the body and breathing in balance. It would help to prolifer proliferate at all levels the good lifestyles practices particularly of intake, routine and labor as well as home remedies for minor ailments. 4. Medicine and treatment system at the societal level. An evolved holistic system of medicine and treatment which is based on the essence of different systems prevailing today. It would be run as a service with a feeling of mutual fulfillment rather than merely as a for-profit business. If we look at the current health system, there could be a significant reduction in the burden on it. About 80% of illnesses which are related to lifestyle could be prevented at the level of individuals, families, family clusters, schools and colleges. Approximately 10% of the remaining could be handled by some home remedies, leaving a very small percentage of communicable illness, accidents and genetic disorders that would require medicine and treatment. With this basic understanding, there can be a major shift in paradigm. One essential outcome of all this exploration on health and self-regulation is that we are able to identify the definite need of physical facility. We are able to find out what is required and how much is required for nurturing and protection and right utilization of the body. We have briefly explored this in the discussions about prosperity in chapters 4 and 7. For designing the production system, it is essential to identify and aggregate the need for physical facility in the family, village, nation and so on, all the way to the world. Production work. Work is the effort a human being does on the rest of nature and production is the physical facility derived from work. The production of a mobile phone includes the mining of hematite, the iron ore, calcopyrite, copper ore, crude petroleum oil, etc. and refining it for use in the mobile phone manufacture. Human effort is required to design the phone, make the components, assemble them, test the assembly and in so many other steps. In the production of wheat, a field with fertile soil, water, air and wheat seeds are required. All these are units in the rest of nature. In addition to these, human effort is required to till the soil, to sow the seed, to water the field, to remove the weeds, to harvest the wheat, to thrash it, to remove the husk, to clean it and so on. All this work is required. For, a, for any production to take place, two things are required. Rest of nature, natural resource is required and human effort, work is required. There are two important issues related to production work. These are one, what to produce. Two, how to produce. Regarding what to produce, we have already discussed while exploring the proposals about prosperity 
health and self-regulation. We have to produce physical facility required for nurturing, protection and right utilization of the body. Regarding how to produce, there are two criteria. One, the process should be cyclic and mutually enriching. It must be eco-friendly. Two, justice must be ensured in relationship with human being. It must be people friendly. A process is cyclic when it is in accordance with the cycle in nature. In such a process, the resource utilized can return to its original state in due course of their life cycle. In such a process, there is no waste. Everything produced is either in the form of a finished product, a byproduct, or a or co-product which is used in some other process. For example, when you sow wheat, it germinates, grows into a plant, produces multiple grains of wheat, and goes back to the soil. A guava plant originates from one seed of guava, grows into a tree, has multiple leaves and fruits, and after a certain period of time, goes to the state where it came from. But before it goes to soil, it enriches the soil too, with its fallen leaves and fruits. Such processes are already taking place in, na in the nature. Our task is to understand the existing cycle in nature and utilize them to fulfill our needs. When it comes to production, we can add some activity in between to fulfill our needs without disturbing the overall cycle. For example, the production of jaggery is a cyclic process. Sugarcane is pressed to extract the juice. The leftover husk is dried and used as a fuel to heat the cane juice. The juice reduces to a thick sweet syrup and then dries to form jaggery. The emitted carbon dioxide is absorbed by the leaves of the trees around. The released water vapor mixes with the air. The ash from the fired husk fertilizes the soil of the surrounding field. A process is mutually enriching when every unit that is participating in the process is being enriched. In the jaggery production process, the soil is enriched when the ash of the fired husk is uh, mixed with it. The air is enriched by the water vapor and so on. Jaggery with its various natural uh, minerals and uh, vitamins is nurturing for the human body. It is used in many traditional medicines in India. Of course, justice is essential amongst the people involved in the work. We have discussed that in previous chapter, so we can recall it. Uh, basically means ensuring mutual happiness. So for a production process to be sustainable, eco-friendly and human friendly, it has to be one, cyclic, to mutually enriching three justice is ensured with human beings now let us look at nature natural processes already have these characteristics they are cyclic and mutually enriching while we recall and elaborate this in the next chapter we are introducing it here because of its application in man-made processes is essential just look at the soil, water, air, and plants, referred to figure 9-6. The plants are growing on the soil. The soil, the water, the air is getting converted into a plant. When the leaves, the fruits, the flowers fall on the ground, they get converted into soil. You can see the soil is getting converted into plants, and the plants are getting converted back to soil. It is a cyclic process. 
In this process of soil to plant and plant to soil cycle, the plant is getting enriched and the soil is also becoming more fertile. It is also enriched. When the leaves, the flowers, the fruits are falling into the soil and getting degenerated, this soil becomes more fertile. This is a cyclic process resulting into enriching of the plant and the soil both resulting into mutual enrichment. You can see that this is a process which is already going on in the nature. It's not that you have to construct that process. What we need to do is to understand that process. We saw the cycle and mutually enriching processes between air, water and the plant. Now, when we look at the forest, you can extend it further to include animals also. Animals need, plant, uh, need water and air to survive. Birds and animal droppings are very good manure for the plant, plants. Animals and plants play a key role in balancing the soil-based carbon and uh, atmospheric carbon. If you look at this, the soil, the plants, the animals and birds all are there in the forest. They are all related to each other in a cyclic and mutually enriching manner. The soil is enriching the plants. The plants, plants are enriching the animals and birds. The animals and birds are enriching the soil. All of them are related to each other in a mutually enriching and mutually fulfilling manner. This process of mutual enrichment is already going on in the forest. If you see among these three groups referred to figure 9-7, you don't have to create the cycle of mutual fulfillment. It is already there. Through this process, we are getting so many things from the forest. We are getting fruits, we are getting flowers, we are getting timber, we are getting water throughout the, the year coming down from the forest and so many other things. We don't have to do anything for this process to continue. It is like a perpetual machine which is going on without our participation. It is cyclic and it is mutually enriching as long as human being has not made an intervention to it. Now let's place the human being there and see what happens. Figure see figure 9 8 when we place human being we realize that soil air water are fulfilling for a human being we see that plants and trees are also fulfilling for human beings we can also see that we see that animals and birds are fulfilling for the human beings when we look at human being it has natural acceptance for being mutually fulfilling for all these three um, groups. If you ask yourself what will be naturally acceptable to you uh, to ensure mutual fulfillment with three orders or to exploit them, you will see that your natural acceptance is for mutual fulfillment. However, without right understanding, we are unable to, to be mutually fulfilling. We need to understand mutual fulfillment, understand harmony in nature, and thereby ensure mutual fulfillment from our side. Then we will be, be in harmony with nature. Mutual fulfillment essentially means prosperity for human beings and preservation of the rest of nature. Physical facility is produced as a result of human labor on the rest of nature. Through labor on the rest of nature and using cyclic, mutually enriching processes, we can enrich, we can ensure physical facility in abundance for all human beings. Natural farming or forest-like farming is an example of a cyclic mutually enriching production system. With this method, production takes place 
and at the same time the soil also gets enriched in the absence of being in tune with the natural processes we see ultimately resource depletion and pollution resource depletion is the symptom of using natural resources at a rate which is greater than the rate at which it is produced in nature for example if we use petroleum at a rate greater than the rate at which it it is produced in nature there will be a shortage of petroleum similarly pollution indicates that we are producing something which does not return to the cycle in nature or it is produced at a rate that is faster than the rate then it can return to the cycle in nature plastic for example does not degrade it does not return to the cycle of nature for many years carbon dioxide today is produced at a rate much higher than the rate at which nature can absorb and therefore there is a rise in the percentage of carbon dioxide resulting into global warming when we understand this we have the commitment to develop production processes that are cyclic and mutually enriching see figure 99 the existing processes with will also be appropriately updated with the necessary research efforts the existing processes will also be appropriately updated with the necessary research effort one first we have to ensure that whatever processes we have developed so far have to be converted into cyclic and mutually enriching processes second we have to take care of the damage done in all these past years third we have to ensure the process we develop in the future are cyclic and mutually enriching so when we are able to ensure this we can be sure of the fulfillment of our needs for physical facility for generations to come that is why we can ensure prosperity in every family as well as contribute to preservation of the rest of nature generation after generation otherwise after a certain point of time there will be scarcity of resources while discussing prosperity we had seen that it is the feeling of having producing more than required physical facility this more in more uh, than required physical facility is not for indulgence but for sharing with other to extend the boundary of fulfillment of our relationship this in turn will help in societal development for the development of a relationship as well as development of order at social level that is leading to universal human order in tradition around the world there are many good examples of this in india a, a certain portion of family income some 10 to 25% was kept for the purpose of sharing food being made available for guests and to people committed for the well-being of the society is still prevalent in most parts of india maybe in many parts of the world particularly in rural areas many systems maintained by the, the society still have arrangement of food and lodging for anyone who comes to the village or town from outside this is funded by the contribution of individuals and families it was designed for social societal development similarly many pilgrimage places were contributed and are, and are still being contributed and supported by individuals and families with a view of societal development the basic idea of volunteerism is also for societal development for all this the more of the more that required is to be utilized in a it is interesting to note that this type of allocation can help not only in societal development but is also very fulfilling for individuals and families they have the satisfaction of doing the right utilization of their resources at the same time it generates the feeling of gratitude and glory in the family and society 
In contrast, the same more applied for indulgence, like in latest model cars and huge buildings for extravagant personal use, degenerates the individual and at the same time generates a feeling of jealousy and opposition in others. By ensuring mutual Mutually enriching production and work processes, we can ensure prosperity in every family as well as contribute to preservation of the rest of nature. Now, one thing to note is that production may have multiple activities. In the example of uh, mobile phone production, we saw various activities are involved. Similarly, for production of food grain, we need farm implements, which also has to be developed and produced to carry out the uh, agriculture activity smoothly we may need a mobile for communication a tv to learn and share better techniques of production etc then we may need activities like maintenance work at all these levels transportation of the raw material and uh, finished goods etc which can be termed as uh, service sector service sector activities with this background the various production activities may be organized one primary production production of physical facility used for uh, nurture protection uh, protection and right utilization of body for example food clothes shelter to secondary production production of physical facility used for facilitate primary production. For example, production of tractors, weaving machinery, building component manufacture. Three, tertiary production. Production of physical facility used to facilitate production, services, and human interaction. For example, train, TV, mobile, etc. Four, services to facilitate any of the above activities. That is maintenance of tractors, mobile software development services, and so on. You can reflect on what would be the appropriate priority order, one, two, three, four, or four, three, two, one. One can easily see that primary production is of the first priority as it is necessary for the basic survival of human beings. Secondary production gets the second priority as it facilitates the primary production and so on. However, in the present society, the importance given to these is just in the reversed order. Justice preservation. Justice is recognition of human-human relationship, its fulfillment and evaluation leading to mutual happiness. We had discussed earlier that in human-human relationship, the feeling is the core issue. These feelings are definite, can be recognized. Trust is the foundation feeling in relationship. Trust is followed by respect, affection, care, guidance, reverence, glory, gratitude, and love. Love is the complete value. This is the feeling of being related in a mutually fulfilling manner to all human beings as well as all units in existence. Love is expressed as compassion in behavior and work. We have discussed this in quite detail in last chapter that is chapter 8. However, we will discuss some issues related to its implication at the society level. For instance, if you are serving young children, the sick or disabled or old people with a feeling of care, both are happy. It serves the people in need, at the same time gives satisfaction to those involved in the serving processes. If the same thing is done without a feeling of care or with a feeling of opposition, it is tiresome for the caregiver and results in unhappiness of both. This is why professional old age homes, hostels, orphanages, hospitals and the like cannot be run just on the basis of physical facility or paying the caregivers. A feeling of care is a must in those running these systems. You can also observe that the proliferation of such institutions in the society is an indication 
of the breakdown of the family system. Traditionally, the older generation took care of the children, particularly their education sanskar. The younger people served the aged. In this manner, the adults can put focus on the production of physical facility. Expressing right feeling to the other human being leads to happiness in the other. This achievement of mutual happiness is justice. The various occasions of public gatherings like festivals and functions are an occasion for such sharing and drawing attention to the individual and collective sanskar. If there is justice in the society, it will lead to trust and it will lead to fearlessness. This justice leads to fearlessness in the society. It is desirable to ensure justice from family to world family leading to an undivided society. In order to ensure justice in the society, we need to a. Stop the offender from doing further injustice as well as b. Help him or her to develop the competence for ensuring justice. Think about it. In the present system, mostly we seem to be restricting ourselves at a and not doing b. Hence the vicious cycle of injustice continues in the society despite various laws, rules, regulations and so on. Of course, we need laws, rules and regulations, but need, these need to be in harmony with the existential laws and not in contradiction with them. With the right understanding, one would be able to see that all human beings are one family making effort for a common human goal outlined above and that collaboration is the underlying responsibility, not competition, struggle or survival of the fittest. This is an experience shared by a faculty member of a college. Eight students were found to be taking drugs in the boys hostel. This is a punishable offense. A disciplinary committee was called and they started their deliberations. Usually such meetings were concluded in a few hours. They routinely reported such cases to the police and suspended the students. This time, however, was different as the director general and about 50 faculty members, including most of the disciplinary committee members, had been through the human values workshop. The discussion started. We must follow the rules. The president is to report them and suspend them. That's it. These students had come to our institution to become good human beings and learn business management. We have not been able to do the first part at least. Now, if we report and suspend these students, where will they go? Back to the society? Will the society be a better place with them as they are now? The society will be worse off and the future of these students will be spoiled. We should try to help them become productive citizens. How will we do that? The discussion went on for 11 long hours. They finally agreed to take a risk. These eight were sent for counseling during the winter break. In the next semester, they were attached to a faculty member who further discussed with them regarding values. It worked partially. But the key learning was the role of the educational institution. The Human Values program was run with the enthusiasm for all students. Over the next few years, disciplinary cases overall came down to a fair extent, with trust on intention that every child wants to understand and do what is right. And with the effort by the faculty, this, could, this change could be seen. The justice system would have the responsibility to facilitate the development of ability in everyone to understand justice and live accordingly. Justice is equal to recognition, fulfillment and evaluation of human-human relationship leading to mutual happiness. Now when you look at preservation, it has to do with relationship of human being with the rest of nature. Preservation is the recognition of relationship of human being with the rest of nature, its fulfillment and evaluation 
leading to mutual fulfillment. Precisely, preservation would mean enrichment, protection and right utilization of the entire nature. Preservation is 1. Prosperity in human being 2. Enrichment, protection and right utilization of nature. We have discussed prosperity at length as the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility. This physical facility is produced by human effort on the rest of nature. If it is produced in a manner in which the rest of nature is also enriched, the preservation part is also ensured. Enrichment means increase in quantity and quality of physical facility. For example, one grain of rice gives rise to many grains of rice given a conducive environment. This increase in quantity is enrichment. Cultivating rice and consuming rice as food, the prosperity in human being is ensured along with the enrichment of the rest of nature. Protection means ensuring the value of a physical facility for an extended period of time. Protection would include maintenance of the physical order, mineral availability, consistency of the seasons, weather, air quality, approximately 250 to 350 ppm of carbon dioxide, rainfall, maintenance of arctic ice, glaciers, underground water resource, reserves, and so on. In everyday life, protection can be as simple as covering this book with a strong book cover to extend its usable life, varnishing a wooden chair to keep it in usable shape for a longer time, repairing a torn pant, natural farming to extend the period, time period in which the soil is conducive for agriculture, right utilization is its use for the purpose of the larger order. For example, the right utilization of food grain is its use for nurturing the body, not letting it spoil. The right utilization of a pen is to write meaningful, meaningful things. The right utilization of the human body is its use in fulfilling the purpose of the human being. Out of the three, Enrichment, protection and right utilization, the first priority is right utilization. It can be the first step in preservation. So right utilization of electric power, water, food, clothes, etc. can be an initial step for preservation. It is estimated that all the needs of one human being in terms of wood, cut, it is estimated that all the needs of one human being in terms of wood can be met by using the wood from four full grown trees. Trees are anyway growing in the forest and more can be planted. Sal trees, for instance, mature in about 100 years. Other timber trees mature in even less time. In due course of time, they turn back into soil. Wood from planned felling, that is selective felling of mature trees only, can be used to make a house. This way we can ensure prosperity along with right utilization, enrichment and protection. Think of how many trees you can plant. Many more than four, isn't it? In this way, if you plant a tree on every birthday, you may be able to plant many more trees than you utilize. Of course, after planting, a tree needs care for about three years to thrive. Justice ensures fearlessness, that is trust, in the society and preservation ensures the coexistence in nature. Exchange, storage. Exchange means sharing or exchanging of physical facility with a view of mutual fulfillment. The sharing is within the family or to the extent one has to has been able to accept relationship. Beyond that is exchange. Through sharing 
and exchange of physical facility, each family can have all that is needed. That is, there is mutual fulfillment. When we are exchanging physical facility with a family, with a community, the important aspect is the feeling or the view in with which the exchange is done. Storage is keeping physical facility with a view of mutual fulfillment and not with the obsession of for profit or for accumulation or exploitation. It is for protecting physical facility so that it is available when required for the purpose of mutual fulfillment. To see this further, reflect on the following example. There are two persons. They have two pieces of bread, which is not sufficient for both. How do they divide this bread? There are three possibilities. One, both try to take both the pieces of bread. They struggle and fight. Eventually, they decide to take one each. Each decides separately that henceforth they will make effort to grab more of the available food. Now this would be the economics of take and take. Both are trying to maximize their returns. Both are unhappy. Three they logically work out that they can get only one piece each, so they divide in it equally, but neither is fully satisfied. This is the economics of give and take. Third, both persons have a feeling of relationship like a mother and a child, and they know that the two pieces of bread are not sufficient even for one person. Each offers both breads both piece of bread to the other, they discuss and eventually decide to take one piece of bread each. They also decide to work together to make more pieces of bread in future so they can both fulfill their needs. And this is the economics of give, give. Try to find out which kind of economics is operating in your family. When there is acceptance of the other, it is always the give-give mode. The mutual fulfillment is in center. Only when there is a lack of acceptance of the other or opposition with the other, we think about the take more, give less or give nothing mode. You can verify this. Which mode is comfortable, naturally acceptable to you? When the exchange and storage are done with the view of mutual fulfillment, it will help to ensure prosperity and it will also help in the process of ensuring fearlessness in the society. On the other hand, if it is done with a view of a profit or obsession of profit or it is done for exploitation, it will be a cause of deprivation instead of prosperity and it will also be a cause of fear in the society. Now when that feeling of reduction and right utilization, feeling of giving etc extends to the neighborhood and the community, it makes for an assuring unit of human order. In such a neighborhood or community there is a feeling of assurance which further strengthens Fearlessness based on trust. Professions in human society. Once we understand that we have a common human goal, a common purpose, we will organize the society so that it will facilitate the fulfillment of these human goals for all human beings. Also, once we are able to see that, we are related to each other, there will be a feeling of acceptance for all. That is feeling of love. With that acceptance, we will be able to work together in family for these human goals. Profession is the participation of a human being in one or more of the dimensions of the society. We may choose our 
participation where we have developed competence and interest with the feeling of purpose and relatedness our professions will be interrelated and in a manner that everyone is able to participate meaningfully that is for mutual fulfillment it includes teachers doctors farmers and so on this will be elaborated in section 3 chapter 12 to 16 harmony from family order to world family order that is universal human order a society is composed of families living together with a common goal at each level the harmony contributes to the harmony at the next higher level human beings individually in harmony contribute to a family order that is in harmony and families in harmony contribute to a harmonious societal order and all the way to a family world order which is what universal human order is if you try to look at the details it starts with the family order because that is the smallest unit where all these dimensions can start taking shape can be worked up about you must be taking some responsibility at home like sharing views on various topics production of food grain shopping for food cooking food washing clothes and so on like that in a family there is some effort for the development of a perspective about life or education there is also some effort for the development of life related skills how to interact with other people how to take care of others how to live with the neighbors and so on this is all to do with sanskar there is some schedule for waking up cleaning labor exercise meals and so on these are some of the components of the health system in the family like that there is some effort in the family for each of the dimensions that is what we are referring to as family order family has to do with relationship and feeling in relationship family order has to do with the systems with the base of relationship actualizing all dimensions will lead to the fulfillment of human goals in the society with this background now we can talk about the scope of the human society or the scope of the human system the scope is from family order to world family order we have seen that the scope of relationship is from family to world family now we can see that the scope of harmony in society order in society is starting from family order and going right up to the world family order if you try to look at the details it starts with the family because that is the smallest unit where all dimensions can start taking shape then you have family clusters the village village clusters the nation and ultimately the world family you move from world family cut you move from family order to world family order whereby you ensure all dimensions of human order and fulfill all the human goals starting from family order to world family order the family order is the smallest unit of a society family order refers to the system in a family of responsible people living together for the common human goal in particular the family is making effort for mutual development of right understanding and right feeling that is trust respect and so on in every family member including the next generation leading to mutual happiness participation in production of required physical facility in the form of labor leading to prosperity contributing to a human society by way of participating at the next higher level order the family cluster order is the next larger unit it is the system that a group of families evolve in order to fulfill those goals of individual families which require the participation of more people than the family has take a typical example of repair of the roof of a house in a rural area 
The house owner just has to inform the village elders that the repair has to take place and a day is chosen. People from the village assembled at the appointed time, sparing themselves from their own work and accomplish the repair work. The householder contributes with a celebration meal for all. This is something that had been happening traditionally in India. Similarly, even today we can see that if there is a marriage in a family, the group of associated families join in to make arrangements, take care of the girls and ensure that the function is organized smoothly. We can see that there is synergy in the goals of these families. All are making effort for the common human goal. At the base is the feeling of a relationship. There is complementarity at the level of skills and a natural division of responsibility in each of the dimensions. A system for dialogue amongst the families through a selected family representative from every family would ensure proper planning for the common works. All this put together is being referred to as the family cluster order. The family order and the family cluster order are mutually fulfilling. The scope of systems at successively larger and larger complementary units from the family order to the world family order are indicated below. Scope from family order to world family order, universal human order. Family order, family cluster order, village order, village cluster order, city order, nation order, world family order. In this way, every human being has a voice and a role in one or more of the social systems, all contributing meaningfully to the family order, the family order to the family cluster order, and so on to the nation family order and ultimately the world family order that is the scope of the systems in human society natural outcome of right understanding scope from family order to world family order universal human order family order family cluster order village order village cluster order city order nation order, world family order. In this way, every human being has a voice and a role in one or more of the social systems, all contributing meaningfully to the family order, the family order to the family cluster order, and so on to the nation family order and ultimately the world family order. That is the scope of the systems in human society. Not, now, if you look at the basic human aspiration and its fulfillment, one, the happiness is ensured by having the right understanding and right feeling in the self. The prosperity is a feeling of the availability of more than required physical facility. Right understanding is required at the base along with physical facility. Third, the tradition of living with, with happiness and prosperity starts from family order and ultimately continue, continuity can be ensured by the universal human order. So a meaningful life would mean that we have made effort for the above. If we are in harmony, we contribute to, the, to a family order that is in harmony. Families in harmony comprises of harmonious family cluster and so on, all the way to the world family order, which is what universal human order is, which is what harmony in the society means. What we have discussed earlier up to chapter 7 is the development at the individual level. In chapter 8, we discussed about the human family and in this chapter about human society. The overall transformation that is being visualized is this. First, transformation from 
animal consciousness to human consciousness at the level of the individual human being and second the transformation from in inhuman society to human society at the collective level a total transformation is required piecemeal solutions are not going to suffice for example corruption is a problem there are movements against it there are laws rules and regulations about against corruption corrupt practices there are agencies like police courts and jails to deal with corrupt people morals and ethics are taught in schools and colleges like that there are various efforts in the society yet corruption is still there we are saying that corruption is only a symptom of a deeper malady trying to handle this symptom or suppress it suppress it is a piecemeal manner is not sufficient the effort however small has to be with a holistic perspective in the background one understanding things holistically developing a holistic perspective through education sanskar for instance we need to be clear about our basic aspiration as individuals and we need to be clear about our goals as a society second effort for personal transformation to human consciousness and living with definite human conduct societal transformation to human society effort for comprehensive human goal in the family and in the society with this in the background now the symptoms like corruption can then be properly dealt with third the root of the symptoms can be identified corruption domination exploitation are the symptoms of inhuman conduct the real problem is inhuman conduct for for getting rid of the real problem effort can be focused on developing human conduct of course till such time as the society does not have the capacity to develop the human conduct uh, the existing efforts that is laws rules and regulations police court courts jails etc have to be kept up but these are only temporary efforts to suppress the the symptoms figure refer to figure 9 10 human education will prepare people with human consciousness these people will live by human values and have a human conduct people living with human conduct will ultimately give rise to human society such a human society would naturally provide human education for the next generation thus ensuring continuity of human society this is the proposal regarding regarding the harmony in the society and ultimately about uh, universal human order now you can verify for yourself whether this is something is naturally acceptable to you and also work out whether it is feasible to do it my participation that is value in the society that is to make effort for harmony in the society the society is composed of families living together making effort for the common human goal they are interconnected and in interdependent from family order to world family order my participation or value e visa ways the society is to develop the clarity of society its goals program and scope and with that playing a part in the family order and then in the larger society in the family order my participation or value is ensuring happiness in the family by way of helping in the development of right understanding and right feeling in the self of every member of the family particularly the next generation ensuring health in the family by way of a system of nurturing protection and right utilization of the body for every member of the family ensuring prosperity in the family by way of helping the family recognize the need for physical facility 
its production, its protection and its right utilization. Facilitating one or more members of the family to participate in the larger society in one or more dimensions of human order. In the larger society, my participation or value is to play a role in one or more dimensions of the human order, education sanskar, health self-regulation, production work, justice preservation and exchange storage. In this way, the society with happiness in every individual, prosperity in every family, fearlessness or trust in the society and coexistence that is mutual fulfillment in nature and existence is realized. This is my participation or value vis-a-vis -vis society.